folks, Engineer 775 here. Uh, this is early Saturday morning, making a delivery to a friend and a DIY customer, Steve Bird, on his homestead to uh, check out what he's accomplished so far, go over some cool things with you, and I'm delivering him uh, some more solar panels and ground mount as he's about to expand and uh, basically fill out the uh, Solar 12K, and I think he's about to start building his house, so he's going to need more power. He's been in an RV, and and uh, so he's going to need more power soon. And so I'm looking forward to being able to help him out with that. And uh, I think his father-in-law is, or his dad is also building, or landed on the property and needs some solar too. So we're going to talk about that and just catch up with him on his homestead. We're going to talk about the cool um, auto transformer from Solar Edge that he added to try to balance out some unbalanced loads. Shout out to Ben and Ben Solar and Battery on that. So I'll be showing you the auto transformer, showing you his homestead, his updating of his DIY system. And he's got a channel too, so check out Steve Bird on YouTube. He's kind of taking you, walking you through his uh, homestead build out with his power system and completely off grid yes it can be done and the inverters get better and better so it's a shout out to Solark too this is an EMP hardened system so he is running a flooded battery and he is paying attention to it but he's uh, he's a capable capable guy he's a homesteader farmer he's a pilot he's an author <laughs> I just actually finished one of his um, books, audiobook, as I was driving up here, Erebus, and it's awesome. So check it out. It's an apocalyptic thriller called Erebus. It's the volcano on Antarctica. Um, so anyway, just a pretty talented guy. And uh, we're going to show you what he's done and accomplished on his homestead. So here we go. All right, folks, I've made it. I've made it to Steve's awesome farm here in an undisclosed location, of course. Uh, again, this is Steve Bird. Say hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I had fun coming up here, actually. I was listening to Erebus, one of his books. This guy is an author, and I just finished Erebus. Awesome job, sir. It was very good. Uh, Steve's a pilot, an author. He's too many things. Farmer. <laughs> Literally too many. Too things. many things. Farmer, husband, dad, uh, you name it. Homesteader, prepper. And I've seen him homeschooler. I've seen him a lot at uh, prepper shows and stuff. And I finally got the opportunity to come up and check out his farm. And we're going to show you his really cool. Um, he's one of my best DIYers because he's truly done a great job. He's been living off grid for quite a while on the system that he put together. So a I'm going to show it to you. Now. Year and a half. Yeah. And uh, so I'm delivering some more panels, some more steel, so he can double the system size. And let me show you some of the cool things that he did. All right, back when we were doing the PLP Power Peak, Steve went ahead and uh, we shipped him a Power Peak. He built it. They're great ground mount. They're just, uh, they've gotten very expensive due to the aluminum and, and other factors. Um, but this system is uh, an 18 panel, 310 watt. Were these Axitex? 320 split sail. 320. Trinas. Trinas, that's right. These were Trinas. And he's going to build another ground mount in front of it using power peak and we're going to max out the mppt channel and put in 20 of um these are axitec 320s and uh we're close enough i will go over and show you those later on but the main thing i want you to see is the cool job he's done you know i've talked about power sheds and having a separate powerhouse and this is a shed you just had you didn't make this yet it bought it and pulled it in i pulled it up here on a trailer myself nice so having a powerhouse is a wonderful thing because you can sub feed many buildings and he's getting ready to build a house that he's going to be able to sub feed from here and he already sub feeds his RV. So, and again, check out his YouTube channel, Steve Bird on YouTube. And he's done a few videos of his, this build out. And, um, just a couple things I want to share with you. He, this is an awesome liquid cooled Kohler generator. How many kilowatts is this thing? It's just 15. It's, it's, it's 15? Size, but you don't need that since the battery is only used about 4,500 watts to charge. Great. And, and the charger on the Solark is 9,500 watts. So it's a good, it doesn't overload. It definitely wouldn't overload this. And uh, it's got it vented. He's got air, plenty of air coming in. This is a pretty well vented 
building. And then he brings the power to um, the disconnect and he put a bypass in. He's got his transfer switch in here that we use as a bypass. Oh, I'm gonna show off your show off your electrical work. Uh oh, I'm gonna get him in trouble. No strain, no strain release. I'm gonna close it up. Uh, I don't have building codes. <laughs> that's the beautiful thing about where he is. No building codes. So you can do whatever you want to. It's America. So um, this is Solar 12K. Uh, he started off with the 12K, but it had the green board. There was a, a time where Solar had a board that just had a hard time with any load that looked like a DC load, like a variable speed drill or other things, and it would just shut it down. When the, when the load saw that type of load, the load breaker saw that load, it would just shut it down. But this is an updated Solark, sent him a new inverter. It's an EMP hardened 12K and got that resolved. So you've seen plenty of these on my channel, but I, what you haven't seen, which is super cool that Steve and I talked about, is this little white box. And you can hear it. It's the only thing making any noise out here, besides his Rottweiler, is this Solar Edge auto transformer. This is a cool thing I learned about from Ben McFeeters and Ben's solar and battery channel. Um, ben and I have become friends on social media over the years and share, share information. And he had this really cool idea. I think he might have, I don't know where he got the, I may, he might've got it from David Paz, but who used it on a different inverter. So sometimes this inverter will throw an unbalanced load and I'm going to just be nosy here and go into some alarm codes and uh, I don't see one at this point. He's got an AC overload because he doesn't have any grid backup. So he's overloaded the inverter a couple times, which is normal. But an, an unbalanced load on the two different legs of the inverter, the L1 and L2, sometimes, especially like running an RV and everything on, a, on one leg, it can throw a fault. So what Ben figured out and added to the 12K was this cool Solar Edge auto form, auto transformer, which doesn't perfectly balance the solar, but it kind of acts like the transformer that you would see on a pole on the grid, and it balances it out, I believe, through the neutral. And this is simply wired in tandem or in parallel with um, his load panel here. So it's just wired and connected like you would any other load into that transformer. And so he has not been tripping on, right? It's really taken it's, away. It's not tripped since. It's not tripped since he added that transformer, auto transformer. And I think it's about 300 to $400. Yeah, 360 is what I paid. 360 is what he paid. So this is a neat trick that uh, you can add. And again, when you're, when you're a hybrid and you have grid support, and it wouldn't do it if it, the generator was running either. But when it's off grid and just running on the Solark, that little guy, that heavy little guy has been a blessing. And so something to consider if you're off grid and needing to balance out some of the loads. And when you're running an RV, everything, everything he's running is really potentially an unbalanced load. It's running off of one leg, it's 100 and, you know, 120 volt loads. So awesome job, sir. He is, again, it's an EMP hardened system. A lot of people start giving everybody a hard time. And so don't give Steve a hard time. He went with lead acid, flooded lead acid batteries. These are workhorses. These are workhorses that I got for, for him from my Amish folks. This is what the Amish use in their solar systems because it is, they're just workhorses. Yes, you have to maintain them, but he's got the auto watering kit on it. He can keep them maintained, check specific gravity, do everything that you need to do to keep that battery healthy. But they're inherently EMP hardened. So, but those are workhorses of batteries. Everybody's getting um, spoiled with their lithium batteries and the performance. But that BMS is is way too fragile if you're gonna if there's a potential EMP happening. So, anyway, EMP hardened, EMP in inherently hardened batteries. So this is a great little shed you got, Steve. Great little building i won't show your security um so uh, <laughs> this is this is the simple way to do it this is a great way to do this he's got battery backup we always recommend a generator uh he's got he went with a diesel liquid cool that's that is over the top awesome um propane. it is propane i'm sorry the regulator um so that is that is awesome so there's that's probably pro you buy that used or you buy it new uh, I bought it with 100 hours on it. Oh, sweet. So just broken in. 
that's a great addition, which he hasn't had to use through the summer because of uh, we added batteries. We started off, again, he's phased into things, started off with one row of batteries, but you just can pull so many amps out of, I think it was 100 amps, 110 maybe. Our you biggest remember? drawback with the one bank was... Uh, storage. Was storage. You'd wake up oh, in the no, morning... Oh, no, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> you'd wake up in the morning dangerously close to the generator start number of 60%, and uh, Jaeger... <laughs> you would uh, wake up dangerously close to the generator start number that we've got programmed in the solar to 60%. So with the two banks of batteries, even if we crank the air conditioner into the night and, and run all kinds of stuff all night, we still wake up with 80 They needed more storage. So that keeps the generator in the summer at least from ever starting. In the winter, it still runs every now and then because you just don't get much daylight on the stormy winter short days. But Cool. Though it's uh, expensive, he really needed to do it. He needed some more storage capacity. No other way around it. So, all right. Well, this is a awesome job, sir. Good job on getting this thing up and running. There's no cheating here, folks. There's no grid support. He's not even running his generator. This is all on the inverter and batteries, and they've learned how to live within the means of the inverter. But he's about to build a house, so he has to expand. So, um, you it's think it's going to be a hybrid? Not hybrid. It's going to be a, a unique build for the house too. Not having building codes lets us do anything we want. And we're going to have multiple redundant systems. Everything's not going to be on one one load panel. So he might not stack. Right. Still, we're still talking about that whether he stacks two 12Ks or just runs two independent systems. And as a pilot who has lots of redundancies on his plane. Right. He's probably going with that, which I don't blame him. So check out his channel because he's going to be uh, showing us uh, step by step. He promised. No, let's see. I'm going to step on out here. But he promised he's going to go through step by step. I know how it is when you're building something. You're like, oh, I should have filmed that. So he's going to be putting a ground mount in here. He's going to walk you through how he's going to do that. And then any other improvements on this uh, DIY homestead build. All right. Well, it's, uh, we've got to unload some panels and get him his ground mount and hopefully answer any of his questions. And, uh, again, um, you got to check out his books, too. I just f finished the one coming up here, which was awesome. We haven't even talked about that yet. Okay. All right. Anything else we forgot? No, I think that does it. Just appreciate the support uh, doing all this. I mean, when I first started with this, I kind of I jump into everything head first. So I hadn't done a lot of research. I was just trusting that he was going to give me what I needed. And I basically just told him, here's my budget, here's what I want to do, and he, he specked out the system. And I'm sure the first couple phone calls that I made, he was like, oh, God, this is not going to work. No, <laughs> no, no, no. But you would once be. I started the project, I dove head first into it. Now uh, He didn't need any help. He didn't need any help. He did a great job, and um, we're just thankful to be able to support the DIY customers out there because we can't get to all the installs. So thanks again, Steve. Really appreciate it. Thank you.